I'm Joanna Siebert. I'm the Associate Director of Business Programs at UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education. And we are really excited to have you here today with us to learn about our Supervisory Skills Program. Um, the program itself actually starts on May 11th. And so we're going to be um, taking a deeper dive into aspects of the program, as well as one of our featured courses um, that is within that program. So Heather, go ahead and um, pull up the agenda for today. And I wanna introduce what we'll be doing in this next half an hour. Um, we're scheduled to go until 4.30. We may, um, may continue on beyond that if necessary, but um, what we wanna do is really use your time wisely because I know um, so many of us are juggling a lot of different priorities. And, and this program is really about getting getting to the heart of the matter and giving you solutions um, and tools that you can use immediately. So first I'll do some introductions today and um, let you get to know our team um, that is working on the program. We'll also do a little bit of an overview of the program itself, um, including things like how to enroll, how to ask questions after this, this um, informational session. Um, and, what you can expect from your experience in the program. We, uh, we are really fortunate today to have some really amazing instructors with us. So we'll, we'll take a deep dive into one of the class sessions that will be included in this program. And I'm really excited uh, to, to see what happens when we, when we bring these instructors together with their magic and um, all of you. And, um, and then we'll have time for questions and answers at the end. And we'll end with how to get more information if we haven't answered your questions today and also how to enroll. Um, so that's today's agenda. Uh, Heather, would you mind moving forward? So we have a poll to kick off our session today. And I'm always curious to hear from people what their experience is as a supervisor. So as you can see from the answer choices, um, the options range from I haven't yet worked as a supervisor to one that I commonly hear, which is that I have all of this experience and I think it's supervisory in nature, but I don't know that I've ever had that title. Um, and then to lengths of time. So zero to two years, two to six years, six years and beyond, which is a very wide range, obviously. And then um, <laughs> the, the, the one that most resonates, I think, from this year, which is I am a supervisor or I've been a supervisor, but I, it, the concept of time doesn't even matter anymore because everything has changed in my world. Um, so I'll give you a minute to answer those and we're going to um, come back to reveal the results of that. This is really helpful information for us and a chance for you to learn about the other people who are on the, the Zoom session today. We'll go ahead and move forward and introduce the contacts that you um, that you have on this call with us uh, with you today. So, as I mentioned, my name is Joanna Siebert, and I'm the associate director for our business programs, including um, our leadership programs that are open um, access to both work, working professionals and um, also often companies like to send their. Uh, employees to our programs. So uh, Christy can, can share more information about that if you contact her directly. Um, Vincent Chang is working with me as our program representative. Uh, Vincent, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Vincent and I'm the program representative, which means if you have questions about the program or policies, um, I'm happy to help uh, answer those questions. And so Vincent and I generally work with our learners once they've enrolled in the program. And, and a key contact that I really want to introduce, and in fact, you can move to the next slide, Heather, is Christy Craig, who's our enrollment coach. Um, and Christy is a wealth of information, and she's a great person to talk with, um, especially if you're not sure if this is the right program for you or if there's another program that you're also considering if you have questions about what the experience will be like. But um, what I also love about Christy is she will be emailing everybody who's registered for this information session um, with a link to this recording, as well as a, a $100 discount to um, for your enrollment into a program. So really appreciate what Christy brings. She has so much enthusiasm. And um, so Christy, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Sure. Hi. Thanks, Joanna. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Like Joanna said, I am very excited to work with you to answer any questions you might have about the program, to aid you in enrollment, and walk you through the process for anything that might arise along the way. I'll also be taking note during the info session here tonight and then sharing my Calendly link at the end. So that way you'll have access to schedule an appointment with me at your convenience. And I'm here to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. All right, so um, we can move forward and let's share the results of our poll. Is everybody finished, Vincent? Oh, great. Okay, so it looks like about 32% of our participants on the call today have are what I would call sort of early into their career as supervisors. So in the first zero to one to two years of their time as a supervisor. Um, and that's something we commonly see for this program. It's a great program for those who are just um, starting out and really wanting to build up their knowledge base and their tools that they can use as a supervisor. Um, something else that I love about this poll, and uh, Vincent and I, we like to talk about this. One of the, the common questions for this program is, do I need to be a supervisor to take the program? And the answer is no. There are a lot of great things that you would learn in this program that can be used as an individual, as a team lead, um, for people who are you know, really trying to move the ball forward on projects. Um, we do gear it to be essential skills for supervisors, but again, I, I um, believe that those skills are, are universally helpful. And um, I know for myself, often as I continue in my career, it's a great opportunity to, to really refresh or to look at some of the newer challenges that we're facing. Um, for instance, we'll be talking about uh, supervising or leading in um, in-person or virtual teams. And so I know many people have had their experience shift quite a bit in this year. Um, and this is just a great program for um, getting to know classmates who have different experiences and hearing from instructors who really bring real world examples to, and problem solving to the table so that we can work through that. All right, thank you for the poll results. Um, we're gonna move on now and do a second poll. This one is asking, which best describes your interest in the supervisory skills program? So um, it may be that you are looking for some resources or strategies that you can use right now in your current position. Could be that somebody recommended that you um, take this time to strengthen your skill set. Um, it may be that you're ready to look for a new job or um, either in a different company or within your own company and really want to strengthen your resume and your portfolio of um, what you can do. And then also, um, I like to think of this as exploring options for professional development, which may be um, very broad for you at the moment. Maybe you're just really thinking about what the next step is for you. And um, we certainly want to engage you in that thought process and, um, and talk about how this program could fit your needs. And then the other one that I, I really love is um, you're faced with problems right now <laughs> and you need solutions. And you're wondering if this um, taking this program will help you get right to the, um, to the heart of the matter with those problems. And then of course, other. So you may have a different reason that um, we haven't included in the poll. So um, go ahead and register your vote and we'll uh, move on to our next slide. Um, here's some essential information about the program. Um, supervisory skills is designed as four live class sessions offered um, in the afternoon on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So our first date is May 11th. And so um, you basically would be taking the course um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays for two and a half weeks. And so it's a very rapid succession. Um, we like to keep the momentum up. And at the same time, it allows you to be continue working if you're already working or to take care of other responsibilities um, and be learning um, tools that you can apply right away. 
um, testing things out, coming back into class, sharing with your classmates an experiment that you tried or something that you noticed in between classes and really thinking about your own leadership development and um, what you want to be able to do as a result of taking this program. Um, so the cost of the program is 1,325. We also have a number of discounts available. The one that I like to feature on our information sessions is the $100 off that um, Christy would send you. But we also have discounts for groups and for enrolling early. Um, and those will be things that Christy can definitely go over with you to see if you have discounts available to you that you can use. All right, so we'll move it forward again. Let's go ahead and show our results um, from the second poll. Great. So it looks like the majority of people um, are exploring options for your professional development. That's really um, great to hear. And you know, as we move into some of the questions and answers, I hope that um, we'll be able to dive into that a little bit more. And certainly that's a great, um, great thing to explore with Christy. So um, we're, we, we at UC Davis Continuing Professional Education have a commitment to lifelong learning. And I really believe that this program is part of a continuum of leadership offerings that we offer or that you can um, undertake that strengthen um, your uh, eff efficacy in the work world today. So um, we will definitely dive into that a little bit more and hearing about where you think your own development needs are and what you would hope to gain. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, introduce our instructors now. Um, two of our instructors who are not with us on the call today, but um, are just fantastic and have gotten wonderful reviews from students um, in our other leadership offerings are Lisa Montanero and Kristen Bennett. So they'll be teaching in the program. You'll actually get the chance to interact with them multiple times um, during that two and a half weeks. And um, what I really love about our instructors is they bring not only just a ton of passion for learning and development, but also a lot of practical knowledge that they've gained by working with different companies and different individuals and a range of industries. Um, so we'll go ahead and move to the next slide and introduce our three instructors who are here with us today. I'm really excited that we'll be able to um, talk about one of our class sessions in particular. So today we have Candace Morgan, um, Brad Mahaney, and Janet Marl. And I am going to, in a moment, turn it over for you to introduce yourselves. But one of the, the things that I'm most excited for with this program is that we are going to be able to offer this deeper dive into design thinking and um, really test out and experiment and play with and um, try out some of these design thinking approaches um, with problem solving for supervisors today. So either for yourself as a supervisor or with teams that you're working with. Um, and I'm just, I'm really thrilled at what they have come up with. And so, um, we're going to stop the slideshow now, and um, I want to be able to kind of engage in some conversation with them for the majority of our time together. Uh, we will be taking questions, so if you have questions, you can go ahead and um, put them. Vincent, where would you like those questions to come in? So there are two places that you can submit questions. Uh, the chat is a great option. Uh, that might be uh, an, a way that most people are familiar with, but there's also a separate question and answer function uh, you'll notice. So you can also submit questions that way. Great, and Vincent will be helping us to monitor that area. Um, and we really want to encourage your participation. So this is really all about you as as a learner and a participant today, I think you can gain value um, by volunteering. And if you're not as comfortable, I really hope that you know, you'll know you be thinking about how you um, might want to learn more in our class. So Janet, Brad, and Candace, I would love to hear what's so important with this course, this class session content for supervisors. Why is this um, a valuable topic to be learning about? Thanks for the introduction. Uh, we're really glad to be with you. Um, the three of us work together 
to do design thinking um, and to teach it and to work with people to implement it. And we're really excited to be here. And I think the thing that is really um, exciting about design thinking for us is that it actually solves problems and it solves them in a way that works. And it's a very powerful methodology. And the course as part of the supervisory skills is the very beginning of that process. Because we all know that if you start with the wrong problem, you're gonna get a solution that doesn't solve anything. So this is the very beginning stage of what happens in design thinking to create innovative solutions <clears throat> and those that work. And so what we're gonna do is um, later on, we're going to be asking you to put into the chat box an example of common problems that you face in your role right now. So just as we're talking, just kind of priming you to be thinking about those things. <clears throat> and I just wanted to say like, I was so I was so excited because this morning I was working with a client and we use this tool and he is a brand new manager that is having to learn some stuff. And he got this call from um, a person and saying, hey, customers are not getting what they need. And he's going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So he hung up and he called up this new manager. So he went right into, into solve mode. Let's just fix the problem, ran down to the manager. And he started fixing it. I'm going, so how did you know you were solving the right problem? And he goes, well, and this was just what it was. And I went, it sounds like you're playing whack-a-mole. Is that a problem comes up, you just solve it and you whack it down. Another one comes up and you whack it down. So he's just busy tasking and fixing everything. I'm saying, what would happen if you worked on what was causing that mold to pop up in the first place? So there were fewer moles to whack down. So we actually used the tool this morning and, and he discovered that this manager didn't know something and he assumed he did. And then we had to ask him, why did you not know that? Why did you even have that assumption? Why didn't you know that? So then we really started digging down into really what was the problem that needed to be solved and came up with an entirely different plan of how to solve the problem for this manager than what he did yesterday when he got this call saying, hey, stuff isn't happening. So anyway, that's the kind of stuff that we work with um, in, the, in the course. So Brad. Keep going. One of the things that we we see when we're engaging with clients, and I've seen the private industry, I've been in, in the asset management and financial services field for almost 30 years now. And one of the things in that industry specifically, what you see is there's a lot of policy and procedures that are followed. And inevitably, there's problems that pop up. And what I've seen over my years, particularly from managers, supervisors, is the first thing, because the document state, documentation is so tight, first assumption is, oh, there must have been an error due to training. So we need better training. What happens is people will go off and they'll create a brand new training program to solve this problem, but they, don't, they haven't taken the time to spend to really understand what the root problem was. So they think that just doing a better job on training would solve that problem that occurred, that error that occurred, when they really don't know that root. And we see that all the time. So this course will really help you get to that root and the tools that we use will get to that root. And then you'll have a better chance of having that problem not reoccur again. Candace, anything to add to that? Yes. I think especially given that we've learned that so, um, a, a decent amount of our audience of the people that are here today are newer to their supervisory roles, right? Um, and one of the, the big dilemmas is, you know, if you're in charge, does that mean you have to have all the answers? Um, and one of the wonderful things that I love about embracing this mindset is that you don't have to have the answers. You don't have the answers. You are not the most equipped to have the answers. Um, and the premise of design thinking lies in the fact that you empathize with the people that are closest to the problem, the end users. And so it lets go of that pressure for you to just get it right. Um, and you're able to kind of co-collaborate in that creation, um, especially in 
the rapidly changing world that we're in today, right? As Joanna said, one of them is I used to know the answers and I've been a supervisor, but I don't know now. Um, and so that's, that's another great piece that um, really can be unlocked with this, with this approach to problem solving. That's really great to hear. What, um, what do you think that people should expect to experience in your class session? Janet, do you want to? Um... Janet, can I pause this for a second? There's, there's a question that just asked for a quick, like, what right. is design thinking? Joanna, yeah. would it be appropriate yeah. for us to just answer that quickly? Yeah, let's, Absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's jump to that. Thank you. Design, design thinking is a problem solving methodology that begins with the end user, an empathetic um, view of understanding the experience of the people closest to the problem. And then based on what you learn from their experience, then you build a solution, then you create something, uh, a way of solving the problem. Many times the way traditional problem solving is, is that the people who think they're the smartest people in the room, think they know what's going on, they create a solution and then they tell everybody what, what it is and they push it down through the organization. And at that point you have people frontline, people like you, people who you supervise saying, did anybody bother asking us what we thought the problem was? So design thinking flips that traditional problem solving methodology and says, let's start with the people who experience the problem and then take off from there. And for this course, starting with understanding the end user, the people closest, will get you what really is the, the real problem. So it puts all that into place. And then with design, then you have prototypes and then you have you test those prototypes and every testing cycle, everything gets better and better and better. And when you finally implement a solution, you know it's gonna work because you've done all that work ahead of time instead of coming up with a big solution, implementing it and having it bomb. So that's the power of design thinking and it starts with getting the right problem. So Candace, what's the vibe of, the, of how we do things? <laughs> Absolutely. I think kind of building on, you know, Janet and describing design thinking, it's also called human centered design. And so that's kind of the energy that we bring into this space is that focus on the humans. It's collaborative, it's interactive, um, and it's really experiential. We want you to have the opportunity to kind of embrace and practice the mindsets and the, the different way of thinking um, that this methodology entails and put it into practice. Um, so we really dig into um, your doing space. And so through that, we hope that it's a little bit fun. <laughs> yeah, and what we, what we do is we use Zoom and then we use a tool with, that's called Mural. And I'm gonna share that with you. And you were previously asked a question um, about what problems that you encounter as, as a supervisor. So let me share my screen. You'll see what the tool that we'll be using within the course. This is a collaborative tool. So when you jump into the course, you'll receive a little bit of training within prior to the sessions. And then as we go into the sessions, you'll be in this board and participating in here. So since we don't have time today to do that, what we wanted to do is get your feedback on this question that you see up here, the problems that you encounter or that you encounter the most in your role. So if you can type your ideas into chat, what you'll see is these sticky notes be updated by Janet and Candace as you transcribe those into the, the uh, chat box. So go ahead and use the chat box and enter some problems that you encounter in your role. Um, and while people are sharing uh, those, uh, we actually have a few questions uh, related to design thinking. Um, could you all maybe speak about how design thinking compares to PDCA, uh, plan, do, check, act in lean? Sure, the, um, that is also called in design thinking, that same cycle is called a PDSA cycle. So lean, Design thinking is a combination of design, lean, and agile. So all three of those processes are integrated together throughout the methodology. Does 
So we've got keeping Thank staff you. motivated. What else? Uh, okay. I'll zoom in on this tool here so people can see it a little bit clearer. But we use this, and you'll be using this, like I said, to create your own sticky notes. You can see that you can move things around very easily within here. Um, I'm going to put in one that I've heard a lot is um, communication between um, departments. And um, what else we got? Supervising at a distance. How about one more? Let's do one more. Uh, all right, there are 30 of you on the call. You've got to have some problems. Um, maybe while people are thinking of, of some more ideas, we have another question. Um, how do you do your first supervisory experience if you are experienced working within a team and with people otherwise across the organization? That's great. So um, I definitely uh, would love to hear more about that. Is that um, sort of moving into an official role when others view you um, as a peer? Is that the question? Let's see, if, uh, if the person that asked that question wants to maybe follow up with some more details. Mm -hmm. And as that follow-up's happening, um, just this, just a very quick example of one of the things that you're going to see within the course that we put on. So we'll be using this collaboration tool quite a bit, and this is some common. This is a common um, attribute of the mural that you'll be working within. So thanks for participating. And while they we're getting more information on that question, Janet, if you just wanted to kind of close out and get some. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so basically, um, this course is a hands on course for you to experience case studies of how people use this tool for you to bring your own problems that you currently are experiencing practice using the tool with those problems, and then having something in hand to take back to wherever you work. So you can have a plan of where you can start the next day. Of, a, of creating your solutions. So everything is hands-on, everything is experiential. We run it fast, you learn a ton. That's great. Well, I wanna thank our instructors for being here with us and just note the time. Um, so if anybody needs to go, um, you're welcome to do so, but I think um, some of us will be staying on and we can take some more questions. Um, and I'll take a minute, um, shortly to go over what to do if you have more questions after this information session, how you can um, get, more, get more information or learn more about the programs to, um, to really figure out if this is um, a good fit for you or if we offer something else that might be the right um, fit. So um, I wanna come back to the question um, that we were answering before. And also Vincent, if you could let us know if there have been other questions coming in, I would really appreciate that. So um, I did see another note. I'm not sure if it was this from the same person, but it sounds like um, there's recognition that sometimes it can be challenging to, um, to sort of supervise people who don't actually, you aren't employed necessarily and directly um, have a reporting structure that is formalized. Um, is, that, is that a question that we could dive into a little bit more? I'm curious um, from our panelists and I'm happy to chime in as well, but that certainly is, um, is a challenge that we see a lot um, discussed in our leadership classes. Janet, you're yeah, nodding your head. Yeah. Um, well, see, Brad, Candice, do you want me to take that or do you guys want to do it? Go ahead. You have a lot of experience in that space, right. Janet. Right. So I, I think I think the thing that is 
that this tool that we're going to be introducing to what's the right problem is in those types of informal reporting structures or peer structures or um, dotted dotted lines on an org chart. Um, the the thing that can come up is a lot of assumptions can be part of that struggle. There can be barriers that are formal barriers or informal barriers. There can be all kinds of reasons why that communication and those relationships are hard. And starting out with getting to the root cause of those struggles can test out your assumptions, can really get to what may become very uncomfortably close to really what's going on. And when you start getting uncomfortable, feel like you're getting uncomfortably close to a problem, you're probably actually starting to really get at what is the issue here. And, the, and you could bring that challenge to the course and we could walk through with you and your peers in the course could help you walk through what are the levels of assumptions and what, how can I dig deep, deeper and deeper to really what needs to be addressed instead of addressing the symptoms, you know, of that. So that would be a great problem to bring with you and call on the wisdom of the class through the tool. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I see a mention of, you know, sometimes there's difficulty with collaborating or the way that an organization is, is structured. And I think that's where our leadership programs today really try to get at the complexity of being a supervisor, of being an employee in um, organizations where you're working with a lot of different stakeholders and they may all have different expectations and there are ways of, um, you know, leveraging some informal influence that can really help you build those coalitions and um, build trust um, to focus on the work together. And that's definitely a topic that we dive into in supervisory skills is it's, you know, taking a coach approach sometimes, sometimes it's about your communication and needing to practice some types of communication that maybe are less comfortable for you, but work well with um, the people you are in contact with. And, um, and also I think there's a mention of like really establishing some shared goals and the, um, you know, that sense of what, what some of the drivers are that people um, find motivation with today. We have a few more questions. Um, one is how will employee engagement techniques be introduced in this course? That's great. So, um, we will be addressing many of the, the supervisory aspects of supervisory skills. Um, there's quite a range. Employee engagement to me, I think with uh, knowing our instructors is really a, a central part of being a supervisor. And so it will be woven into, I think, several of our class sessions where we look at that. Um, I know that our instructor who will be mo talking most specifically about using a coach approach um, will also be diving into that. I can say also that um, switching gears a little bit in our management development program, um, which we have an information session for next week, we'll be using um, Clifton Strengths, or um, I can't remember if it's Clifton or Gallup, <laughs> which, which way it changed. Um, but uh, that's a, one of our featured class sessions in the management development program as well. And, and we really do a deep dive into engagement um in that class as well so i would say this is a good question to talk with christy about um so she can really go through um with you what specifically you're looking for and often we're engaging in conversations and making sure that um that we can build that roadmap for you and make sure that you're getting the um the topics and the skills that you want to focus on um, so the slide uh, obviously has Christy's Calendly link, and she mentioned you can go ahead and use that to, to schedule time with her directly. I found that to be really a wonderful tool. Um, and her email address is also up there. She'll be sending an email out with the link to the recording of this session. So you can talk with her directly. Um, on the next slide, 
we uh, we also obviously have some a good amount of information about this um, about this program as well as our other leadership programs um, available on our website. And then, um, as I mentioned, we have an information session next week that we'll be diving into management development program. And so, I recommend if you're not sure which is the right fit for you, it's great to attend both the session and that session and get a sense for what some of the different topics are and um, you know, really engaging in some thought about where you are with your trajectory um, of leadership development and, and where you might get those needs met. Um, I think that both of these programs are really a wonderful opportunity to connect with other, others in, um, our local geographic area, as well as further out, and to really get to know some insights from our instructors and things to practice, you know, so you get that real-time guidance on how to apply um, some of these these skills that you're learning, and um, to take note of it and observe and adjust and make plans for your future. Um, so that's where we are today. Again, we'll, we'll go back through our chat and see if there are any questions that we weren't able to answer today. We'll make sure that um, we have an opportunity to, con to connect with you. And um, Heather, you can advance to the last slide. And um, we just wanna say thank you so much for your time today. We know that um, every minute counts and we're really glad that you've been here and, and participated today. So thank you.